More than a quarter million American women were diagnosed with breast cancer last year. New innovative treatments and improved procedures give women more choices and better options for breast reconstruction surgery. A plastic surgeon can rebuild a breast so it is about the same size and shape as it was before. Or the surgeon can modify the non-affected breast to achieve symmetry. And it's possible to have both the breast cancer surgery and the reconstructive surgery performed within the same procedure. Washington Hospital has been nationally recognized for its compassionate team approach to cancer. In fact, Washington Women's Center was the first in Northern California to be accredited by the National Accreditation Program for Breast Centers. Welcome to another session of Voices in Health. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Kostick. Our focus today is new surgical options for breast cancer treatment. On our panel are two board-certified surgeons, Dr. William Dagoni, Jr., a surgeon who has been working with breast cancer patients for 20 years, and Dr. Prasad Kilaru, who has more than a decade of experience performing breast reconstruction surgery. Welcome to you both. Dr. Dagoni, when you see a patient for the first time, what do you discuss? Well, a lot has changed over the years and, and for the better. When we first started doing this, I was usually the first person, or somebody like myself, would be the first person that diagnosed and actually told the patient about the diagnosis. And we learned really early that once you tell somebody they have breast cancer, things kind of stop and shut down, and there's not a lot that can be accomplished. Today, we have so many special procedures and non-invasive procedures done mm -hmm. that most patients now are coming to somebody like myself, diagnosed already, and so the shock factor is gone. And so because of that, we're able to get a lot more done and talk a lot about a lot more things. What I try to focus on is, number one, I don't focus so much on the cancer, but on the individual and the person as a whole. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get you through this. Things are going to be okay. We have a whole system in place. And number two is I try to get them to understand that they're not alone, that this is a process that we are well equipped to take care of and to help them get through that system so they don't have to navigate or try to deal with the anxieties of not only having cancer, but how to take care of it. If you have any questions, call me. We'll take good care of you. I promise, okay? Okay, all right. Give me a hug. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Does it help if a family member comes with that person to the visit? I, I find it personally extremely helpful. Uh, you know, breast cancer affects not only the individual, but everyone mm -hmm. around them. And if they have a good support system, and that support system mm -hmm. starts from the very beginning, I think that the patient just does so much better. The anxiety is, is so much better. And, and the anxiety of the family members are also taken care of as well at the same time. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts in this. You know, you've got the primary care physician who referred the patient. You've got you, and then don't you have a team of other specialists, too, that get involved? We, we really do, and that's part of what we have helped set up here at, the, at Washington Healthcare System is that we approach breast cancer with a multi-team approach. We think that that is just a much better approach to the patient, and it involves several individuals, and that includes physicians like myself, breast surgeons, plastic surgeons, often like Dr. Killaroo, but we also have radiation oncologists, hematology oncologists, we want to treat two parts of you. pathologists, radiologists, all intimately involved. And we also have a fantastic nursing group. And we have a nurse practitioner who runs the center and acts as a navigator and helps coordinate putting this all together. So it really is a multidisciplinary team approach to the treatment of cancer. Well, Dr. Killaroo, when do you get involved in this collaborative team? So it depends on the patients. More often than not, if it's uh, somebody that requires a mastectomy or there's a good chance they require a mastectomy, then I'm usually involved. If a patient's not sure if they want to have a mastectomy or more conservative surgery and they want to discuss the options, that's another time that I get involved. I'm also involved with some of the care conferences. As Dr. Digoni mentioned, we have a team approach, and a lot of times the team comes together with the patient and the family to talk about the different options, and I'm involved in that situation as well. And I keep hearing this term oncoplasty being, being stated you know, in the literature and in some of the magazines. What does that mean to you? Well, so in the old days, the, the premise was we had to get rid of the cancer mm -hmm. and everything else came secondary. Nowadays, our priority is still to get rid of the cancer, but we want to try and do it in a way that we preserve as much of the cosmesis and function as we can. And that involves sometimes not only 
doing the initial excision in a way that's cosmetically acceptable, but also if we need to do something to the opposite breast to achieve symmetry and being involved in the process from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. A lot of the oncoplastic um, procedures start with the, general, the breast surgeon. And then as a plastic surgeon, I help fill in the gaps depending on what needs to be done. So Dr. Dagoni, have you changed your style and how you do surgery? if pre people want reconstructive surgery afterwards? Well, I think a lot of things have changed. Uh, we, because we can offer so many more options for patients, mm -hmm. we've had to evolve our surgical styles. But I think more importantly, on a personal level, I've adopted the idea that I'm, when somebody walks into the, to my office, we're gonna focus on uh, cosmesis as well as a treatment of the cancer. cancer. And so we make a purpose of getting plastic surgery involved very early. So it's a really a change in the thought process. And that mm -hmm. is, we're looking at the whole individual because psychologically as well as physically, it's important to deal with that. Well, how does a patient decide what's right for them? Some patients have set ideas of what they want. Most do not. Mm -hmm. And it really takes a lot of experience to kind of figure which ones they are. Mm -hmm. We start, when they walk into our office, we actually have what we term an oncoplastic pause. We're, in part of our talking with the patient and their families, we talk to them about plastic surgery and cosmesis and how we are striving to help them, at minimum, have their breasts maintain its appearance and, at best, maybe even look better. But that really involves a dedicated team. And so, it, we, right from the very get-go, we talk about often with drawings, often with pictures. So and that has been a very change in, from when I first started this, when it was deal with the cancer, take care of the cancer, and we'll deal with everything else afterwards. Yeah, I would imagine it would depend on that person's state of health or age or you know what kind of cancer it is. That, that would help determine what they should do too, wouldn't it? Absolutely. A lot of factors go into deciding what's, what's the best for each individual. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different cancer. Their morphology is different. The way they present is different. Their, their stage is different, their comorbidities, are they smokers, are, do they have diabetes, do they have high blood pressure, all that, are, are they obese, that are all factors in to what is going to be the best options for them. So the key is treating everybody as an individual. Well, Dr. Tagoni, what makes Washington Hospital such a special program for breast cancer treatment? Well, when a patient's done in our office, we have the ability with a single phone call to start this multidiscipline team approach to her treatment. And that includes appointments with oncologists, radiation oncologists, a plastic surgeon like Prasad, uh, but as well as radiologists, pathologists. We start a breast care conference and a breast tumor board, all initiated from the office from a single phone call. And also, one of the really uh, great advantages of having this team approach is that we're able to shorten the time of diagnosis and start treatment very quickly. Mm -hmm. Nationally, the average from the initial observation of an abnormal mammogram to starting treatment is anywhere from four to six weeks. Whereas in our center, when we started, we were at four to six weeks, but last quarter we were at nine days, which as you can tell is a significant decrease in the amount of time that people have to worry about what's going on and, and what do they do for the treatments. With everybody being really dedicated and involved and willing to cancel other appointments, make extra time to see the patients, we're able to get them in sooner and get the treatment started sooner. You know, it sounds like breast cancer patients, each one is treated like a concierge patient. They have one phone call, starts the team, collaborative team, shortened time so you don't get anxious. That's really, really impressive. When we return, we'll take a look at the wide variety of breast reconstruction options that are available for women. And I had told Dr. Dagoni, I said, please tell me. He goes, you want to wait until you come back? I said, no, I want to know. When you find out, I want you to tell me. And I get the phone call. I'm like, oh, here we go. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry to say that you have cancer. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I pulled over. And, of course, I'm a mess. Um, but he said, don't worry about it. And his staff made the appointments, um, called me back and said, hey, you have an appointment on the 14th. You have an appointment on this day. And you have an appointment on this day. And if there's any openings, they're going to bump you up. And it was amazing. I mean, now I don't have to go figure out who I got to call, who I, what I got, what doctors I have to go to. They had them all lined out for me. Every woman is unique. At the Washington Women's Center, we take a unique approach to your health. We offer a comfortable, supportive environment, state-of-the-art technology, health screenings and resources, and we're the first center in the Bay Area to be named a nationally accredited breast center. 
we're more than a health provider. We're your health partner. Call to schedule an appointment. This is my medical clinic. This is my gamma knife. This is my emergency room. This is my coronary stent. This is my hyperbaric chamber. This is my digital imaging center. Washington Hospital is a leader in providing advanced medical care. Whether you're a community leader or just a proud community citizen, Washington Hospital is owned by you. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. I chose reconstruction because I just wanted to go on with the rest of my life. I didn't want to look at myself every day and think I had cancer. I wanted this to be something that happened and then to move on. I think this procedure and being able to do it right at the first time of surgery um, really helped me to stay um, focused and positive. It helps you to kind of forget, you know, when you wake up every day and you're getting dressed, you kind of feel um, a, more normal. I think that if you don't do that, then you have a constant reminder of what you went through. And I don't think that your life should stop when you get diagnosed with cancer. I think it should be something that you go through and you go on. And it's really your choice if you let that happen. And for me, reconstruction meant that I was going to go on. Welcome back to Voices in Health. We have learned that breast reconstruction surgery helps women regain physical symmetry, self-esteem, and self-confidence. Dr. Dagoni, who is the candidate for immediate reconstruction? Well, it's changing, and that is almost everybody can be considered a candidate for immediate reconstruction. Really? And that has changed over time. Um, again, everybody's treated individually, and we try to talk as a team on which is the best approach and we do collaborate and decide that, and part of that collaboration is with a plastic surgeon. There's very few indications, but typically the individual that has an advanced cancer that we know is gonna require additional treatments besides surgery, such as radiation and maybe intense chemotherapy, mm -hmm. those patients we have been reluctant in the past to proceed with immediate reconstruction and have recommended that they wait that data is changing a little bit. So mm -hmm. almost all patients now are, are getting at least the option to talk to a plastic surgeon about options available for them. Hmm. Dr. Killaroo, is there any patient that's not a candidate then for some sort of reconstruction? As Dr. Duguni mentioned, most patients are candidates for some form of reconstruction. Some of the types of reconstruction are a little bit more involved. And if the patient is not from a health standpoint or a comorbidity standpoint is not uh, able to tolerate the more extensive procedures, we can do some of the simpler procedures that will help create some form of breast and, and bring them closer to symmetry with the opposite side. Also, if we're not able to do anything really extensive with the side that had the mastectomy, we can always do procedures to the opposite breast, again, to achieve better symmetry between both the breasts. So we have a lot of different options in, in what to do then, even just initially, that you said we could have it something done right away for a candidate, or we could have a limited procedure done, or we could get started on the process for a, a full reconstruction. Yeah. The way that we look at reconstruction is it can be immediate, which is at the time of the mastectomy, mm -hmm. or it can be delayed, where uh, it can be anywhere from a couple of months to up to a year. And I've had a patient who came in 17 years after her mastectomy to do a reconstruction. So there's no time limit. You get a slightly better result with an immediate reconstruction, but again, we fall back on what the needs of the patient are. And if, if because of medical issues, social issues, family issues, the patient's not able to have the reconstruction at the time of the mastectomy, we can do it at a later date. We are also looking at doing more partial reconstructions where you've had a lumpectomy, um, but the result after the lumpectomy is not ideal, then there are things that we can do, again, to achieve better symmetry between both the breasts, either by operating on the side that had the cancer or operating on the normal side to, to match the two sides. What about paying for these procedures? Does insurance usually cover it? So one of the really nice things is that there are both federal and state laws that mandate um, payment for uh, treatment of breast cancer. 
and that includes surgery on the opposite normal breast to do what would otherwise be considered a cosmetic procedure such as a lift or an enlargement mm -hmm. as long as it's being done to match the the cancer or the reconstructed breast it would still be covered by insurance and that's important we have to give that information at the time of their visit because a lot of patients will be reluctant to ask and are automatically concerned that their insurance won't pay for it so it's information we have to provide them right up front that that this is an option for them and it's an option that will be addressed from an insurance standpoint and I think one of the other important points is that um, it doesn't matter if you change insurances or anything like that. It's not considered a pre-existing conditions and denied because of that. As long as you have insurance that mm -hmm. covers treatment of breast cancer, then the reconstruction and everything else is covered as well. Let's talk about immediate reconstruction then. What are the risks and benefits with that procedure? There are several different options in how we do the reconstruction. Uh, across the country, the most common way that reconstruction is done is with the use of uh, implants, silicone or saline implants, that are placed underneath the breast, underneath the muscle where the breast was, and that provides the volume for the new breast reconstruction. Mm -hmm. The other options are to use um, your own tissue, and the two common areas where we take the tissue from is from your back or from your abdomen. And among using your own tissue, the abdominal tissue, is the most common uh, way of doing the reconstruction. There are two types of uh, flaps, which is the tissue that mm -hmm. we move. One is called a tram flap, which takes the muscle of the abdomen along with the skin and fat. The other is called a diep, D-I-E-P flap, where it doesn't take the muscle, it just takes the skin and uh, fat. And both of those are very good and very commonly used options for reconstructing the breast. The advantage with those options are that you're using essentially like tissue. Breast is mostly skin and fat, and the tissue that we're replacing it, if we use the abdominal tissue, is skin and fat, so you have a much more natural appearance to it. But it's a much more complicated and much longer operation with a longer recovery, and not everybody's suited for that operation. What about if you can't have it at the same time? Then do you still have the same surgical options later? Yes, you do. The advantage of doing the surgery at the same time, and one of the things we do here at Washington Hospital, is we have breast surgeons that are well versed in doing uh, what we call skin sparing mastectomies. So mm -hmm. they're leaving most of the skin on the breast intact and just taking out the cancer itself. So when we're doing the reconstruction, the scar that's left is very small because most of the skin uh, from the chest is still there. Whereas if we have to do a delayed reconstruction, then the scar that ends up is, is larger. The mm -hmm. reconstruction for the most part is about the same, but the, the length of the scar is larger when we do a delayed reconstruction as opposed to an immediate reconstruction. So Dr. Dagoni, you've actually changed your procedures based on patients' wishes. Oh, absolutely. Every woman who comes in has the option of some type of oncoplastic approach to her treatment mm -hmm. to ever, ever cancer. Everybody, whether it's breast conservation or mastectomy, and it, it's not just the involved breast, but the opposite breast as well. So it really is dealing with the whole individual in terms of your approach. You're still mm -hmm. treating the cancer, you're still doing the right operation cancer-wise, but you're also focusing on the cosmetic outcome, and that often involves both breasts. It keeps evolving. We, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Prasad mentioned skin-sparing mastectomies. Him and I are now going to start evolving into what we call nipple-sparing mastectomies. Mm. The data out there is telling us that that is a safe operation, that the concerns that a lot of physicians had about leaving certain tissues behind, cancer cells in the duct, hasn't really borne the test of time. And so you have to keep evolving in this field because it, the information keeps evolving mm -hmm. and it keeps becoming more and more cosmetically appealing. Do women who have had reconstruction, do they have a, a lower risk of having a reoccurrence? So data has shown that the reconstruction does not change your uh, chance of developing a recurrence of the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't increase or decrease your chance of missing that recurrence. So mm. patients still need to have continued yearly evaluations by their oncologists or their surgeons to, to make sure that everything is okay. But there's also data from the plastic surgery literature showing that women who have reconstruction have better self-esteem, are able to continue the treatments for their cancer better because of the, their enhanced uh, sense of self from the mm -hmm. reconstruction. 
And I guess one of the limitations of, of these procedures is the size of the cancer when it's discovered. Is that, is that right, Dr. Degoni? Yeah, and again, every individual is different, and the way they present is different. Um, we, as a medical community, are starting to treat large breast cancers first with chemotherapy. We call that neoadjuvant treatment mm. um, to help shrink this tumor down, mm -hmm. uh, number one, uh, because we can often then save the, the breast. Again, we're back to cosmetic outcomes. Sometimes we can't, and we still have to do reconstruction and stuff. Mm -hmm. But size and location of the tumor very much dictates the type of procedure and in the order of how you're going to treat it. And probably a, body, a person's body type would dictate what kind of uh, flap you would have too, wouldn't it? You know, based on where their blood supply is or, or where you want to preserve their blood supply, is that right? Sure, yes. It depends. As I mentioned, a lot of the comorbidities, the, whether they have uh, diabetes, whether they're smokers or not, whether mm -hmm. they're um, overweight or not, all of these factor into which type of reconstruction would be the best option. Well, Dr. Kellery, do you think oncoplasty is the wave of the future then? I definitely think so. It's shown that it hasn't changed your ability to treat the cancer effectively, but you're getting a much better cosmetic result. You're able to make the patients feel better about themselves, which more often than not helps them continue the treatment to the end. I've had patients who have one surgery and they have something that similar on both sides in a bra and clothing looks fine. And I've had other patients have five, six, seven surgeries to achieve the exact symmetry to the opposite side. The good thing is insurance pays whether it's one surgery or 10 surgeries, and it's whenever the patient is satisfied is when we stop. And most patients, when they go through the process, go to the nipple uh, reconstruction, the tattooing, to achieve good symmetry. But some people are happy after one operation. Some people take two or three years before they decide to get, come back for the next stage. So it's, it's purely driven by the patient. So really, this can be a journey of many years, many life stages. I would think that the stage of life you're in would have a chance, a difference in what kind of reconstruction you would pick too. Very much so. Uh, I've had patients who are very young, who still have young children, who don't want to have a very extensive reconstruction because they don't have the time needed to recuperate from that reconstruction, mm. that then come back 10, 15 years later to have a more definitive reconstruction because now their kids are in college and they want to take time for themselves. Well, Dr. Degoni, last question. I'll give you one more opportunity to tell me any new advances that you've learned that we haven't discussed yet. Well, I think it's important that as we move into this new paradigm of oncoplastic surgeon, that surgeons in general, breast surgeons in general, continue to evolve. We are doing a lot more stuff. We're doing nipple sparing, areolar sparing, mastectomies, and that takes an improvement and an education in your surgical expertise. But all patients, when we're thinking about oncoplastic surgery, it requires a change in how we approach that breast and the opposite breast. And therefore, the surgical techniques keep evolving, and you're obligated to keep evolving as well. And I think one of the things that's really great about Washington Hospital is all of the doctors that I've been involved with, uh, with the breast center, are open to learning. I mean, we've tried new techniques, uh, not only in the general surgery part, but the plastic surgery. The oncologists are always trying new uh, approaches. Uh, we're involved in several of the studies that are done between here and in Stanford. So everybody's open to learning, and I think that's how we can always stay ahead of what's going on. Thank you, Dr. Killaru, and thank you, Dr. Degoni. As one can see, at Washington Hospital, our goal is to help women who are diagnosed with breast cancer achieve successful outcomes. Benefits of breast reconstruction are enhanced psychological health, increased self-esteem, improved sexuality and body image, plus a reduced concern for cancer recurrence. It's a process that can be life-changing. I never felt like I was going through this alone. Just from the fact that I had them both there all the time and I was seeing them and they were communicating with each other, I just never felt like it was something that I was doing by myself. If I had to do it again, I would have, I, I think that for me, I would have no worries. I think I'd be able to handle it better um, and be able to be at ease the second time around. God forbid if that ever happened, but I mean, I know that I could come here and everything would be handled for me all at once. Just like I kind of consider them part of my extended family, I felt like they treated me the same way. You know, a lot of compassion and I kind of felt like I was their only patient for a while there. <laughs> Um, and you'd never know that they were so busy and, you know, did a lot of surgeries. Um, but 
I didn't feel that way at all. I felt like they were really just, I felt like I was their only patient. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Voices in Health. For more information about Washington Hospital's breast cancer surgery and reconstruction, visit whhs.com or call Washington Women's Center at 510-608-1301.